I just sort out my tie a minute, hang on. I'm gonna just sort my uniform out, gotta look smart on my first day at school. Hello witches and welcome to part one of my Harry Potter World tour slash Warner Brothers studio tour London, the making of Harry Potter. I am very excited to have you here with me as we talk all things Harry Potter today, so let the magic begin. <laughs> Welcome, I am obviously a Ravenclaw and I'm very excited to be sharing this with you. So thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss part two of this video. Very excited to share that with you. We're gonna be unboxing slash showing a whole video of all the items that I ordered from the tour. So today's video was going to be a full on vlog of my trip to Harry Potter World, which is what I like to call it. However, <laughs> I thought I'd be really clever and do time-lapse videos of the entire tour because that way you guys would get to be immersed in it and I could do a voiceover. Unfortunately, even though I filmed 42 videos over the five hours that I was there, it's just it's just condensed itself, let's say. Even though I've slowed it down quite a lot, it's, it's come to under two minutes. So instead of being a vlog, I will share that with you towards the end so you can just check the timestamps below. I'm gonna share with you some tips of some things that I learned that might be useful for you when you go on the tour. And I'm also gonna share with you my favorite elements from the tour and some some photos and things that I took whilst I was there. So I think I'm just going to dive in and start by sharing some tips which I would have found really useful if I had known them ahead of time and I'm sure there are so many amazing YouTubers and content creators out there who have tips as well so please do check them out because they probably know things that I don't know but just as a first timer or even going as a second timer these tips might just be really helpful for you. So the first thing I'd really recommend is to have e-tickets. That was so easy because you almost skipped the queuing side of things because you didn't have to wait to print off your ticket. You could just literally go straight into the queue, scan your barcodes and go straight in, which was really, really useful. So I definitely would recommend getting an e-ticket option when you sign up. Second thing to know is that the cloakroom, the shuttle bus to and from Watford Junction Station and the car park are all free slash included in the price of the ticket, which I think is amazing. So if you do go by train or by any form of public transport and you get to Watford Junction, you can just show your ticket and get straight on the bus when it arrives. They run every 30 minutes for the entire day that the studio is open. So you can get to and fro really safely and really quickly. And there's a really fun little video that they play when they're on the bus with Tom Felton, at least that's the one I saw. And the bus is just really Cool. it's just got this lovely atmosphere because everyone's so excited to go so I definitely think that's an amazing part but you don't need to pay any extra for those things the cloakroom is brilliant they give you a little ticket and they look after your things so carefully I thought they were amazing there and they were really lovely staff members the next thing to know is that even though you have booked on a specific time for your tour nobody really calls you in for it or says okay the one o'clock tour let's go you just put your stuff in the cloakroom maybe grab the audio guide or maybe go to the bathroom and then you go straight into the massive welcome foyer and then you can head straight into the tour area. Of course, if you want, you can grab a drink or a coffee from the chocolate frog cafe or any of the cafes or even pop into the shop beforehand. But if you're like me and you're very excited to get into the tour, then I would recommend you go straight to the line and go through the two rooms that they have there, which are covered in film posters. You guys will see that in my micro vlog shortly. And it also has Harry's cupboard under the stairs, which is so cute. It's really weird to see it up close and personal. It's tiny. And then what they do, and it's something that I didn't actually know, is that they take you into two other rooms and I'm not gonna spoil the surprises of those rooms, but one of them does have a welcome intro video and another one is just really cool. And at the end, the reveal is amazing. It honestly made me wanna cry. So you guys will really enjoy that. I'm not gonna tell you about that. I'm gonna let that be a little surprise for you to enjoy. The next tip I would really recommend is to take a power bank with you or they do have power banks available at the audio guidebook part of the reception area so you can always go and sort that out there because you are going to be taking so many photos, so many videos, your battery is going to run out really quickly on your phone but I think by the time we had gone through just the sets my battery was down to like 18% and my friends was down to like 1%. So you definitely want to make sure that you have enough battery with you to see through the whole tour and to just really create loads of memories from that. I also would really recommend taking some water or a drink with you on the tour because the first section of the tour took us three hours to do and I was really thirsty by that point. And when we got to the Backlot Cafe, they do have areas where you can fill up your water bottles, which is amazing, but that is quite a way into it. So I definitely would recommend taking something with you so you can stay hydrated. The next tip kind of leads on from that. I would say definitely make 
make sure that you've had a really good breakfast or a really good lunch before you go into the tour because you can obviously go to the cafes at the front. However, as I said, if you're excited like me and you want to get straight into it, you might not go into them. Or you might think, I'll wait to get to the Backlot Cafe afterwards when I've been halfway through the tour. And you will definitely find that you need to eat or drink something by then. We started the tour at one o'clock and by the time we got to the Backlot Cafe and had queued to get our food, it was about 4.30 and we'd had breakfast at like 10 in the morning. So we were really hungry by that point and we actually ended up skipping queuing to go onto the Hogwarts Express to go to the cafe and then we never got to go back and enjoy that. So I would really recommend making sure you've had loads of food or snacks or anything that you can beforehand so that you're really able to go on the tour and not be thinking, oh my God, I'm so hungry, I need to miss out on bits or I'll come back to this or I'm really thirsty. Just make sure you're really hydrated and really well fed because then you can be totally present and immerse yourself in the moment. The next thing I would say is that if you're someone like me who gets migraines, there are a lot of bright lights on the tour and some strobe lights and some flashing lights and some smoke and things that they do as well. We went during the dark art season, so every so often the Death Eaters would come out and there'd be smoke and lights for that. So, so if you're somebody who has any sensitivity to bright lights or to flashing lights, definitely be prepared ahead of time. The staff are so helpful and they can take you on separate hidden routes if you can't go through that space. I definitely found in the Forbidden Forest that the Patronus was really, really bright and I really struggled with that and I actually shielded my eyes and, and kind of closed them and there's a bit of flashing lights there as well when I went through there, which was kind of a shame because it was a really cool space, the Forbidden Forest. So I definitely recommend and just being aware of that ahead of time. The next tip I have for you is that you will definitely need much more time than you think. I think they say on average the tour takes three hours. I really feel like that would only be the case if you weren't a major Harry Potter fan and you literally ran through the entire thing because there are so many screens with videos on there. There are so many like boards with information and there's so many sets and things to see. I think it took us three hours just to get through the sets before we even got into the other half of the tour or the back lot. It took us three and a bit hours to get through there. So I would definitely recommend allocating like maybe five to seven hours. The more time that you give yourself, the more you can obviously enjoy it, the more you can immerse yourself in the magic and just take loads of photos and videos. We had to kind of cut our time a bit short. And so the second half after the Backlot Cafe, we kind of raced through that a bit. So that just gives me an excuse to go back and enjoy it again. But I want you to be able to enjoy it as much as possible for your time there. So I would definitely say give yourself extra time so that you can really see everything, read everything, watch everything take part in everything that you possibly can. The next thing I would really recommend is taking part in the green screen opportunities. There were quite a few that you could enjoy. So the first one is in the area where the sets are and they do a photo of you and the people you're with together to make a wanted wizard's poster or witch's poster and that was kind of fun but they do that bit really quickly so I would say think of your poses before you get in there because they literally were like okay stand there click photo done so you don't really have time to you know get into a pose or anything and obviously it's for a wanted poster so you want to kind of look menacing or scary whereas we were just like cheesily smiling and then when we saw the photos afterwards we were like oh <laughs> this doesn't really work because we just look too cute and happy so you know what can you do you look adorable when you're wearing a robe like this so you want to make sure that you have you know your pose is ready. The second part is the broomstick that you can ride again. They do say to you like you know put your hands here and look at this camera and then put your hands here and reach out for the snitch and look at this camera however in all of the photos and I will show you my photo you almost look a bit wooden because you're sitting so still and obviously the broom is meant to be flying around so it would probably be better if you leaned forwards a little bit or you know like looked as if you were actually riding a broom so I'll insert my photo for you now to have a look at. And I mean, it's such a cute photo, I love it. But at the same time, I really wish I'd been like a bit more active or dynamic in it because <laughs> I just look super wooden. Wooden? I just look super wooden. I look like I've literally been on a green screen and placed in there. It would look more fun if I'd had to drop my phone. Whoops. Yeah, it would have been so much better if I'd been leaning forwards or looking like I was actually flying a broomstick. So I definitely recommend that. They have several different backgrounds that you can choose from. I chose this one because I just thought it worked really well as a photo. I think each photo was about 14 pounds uh, when I was there. And then the second green screen experience that you can go to is on platform nine and three quarters and opposite the Hogwarts Express, they have all the carriage seats. And so you can go in and sit there. And I think it's about a two minute video that they play and they do a voiceover to tell you 
you have to react to things and then again you can take some photos at the beginning and choose your backgrounds for that. I'm going to show you the one that me and my best friend chose because honestly this photo was just so funny we couldn't help but pick this out of all of the photos that they did because it was just so silly so let me just insert that quickly for you now. Honestly, I find that hilarious. And then they do this two minute video of you being on the Hogwarts Express and you know, all the different scenery. And there's a part where the Dementors come on. <laughs> I fainted, I pretended to faint, that was really funny. And then they show you only five seconds of the videos for you to decide if you want to buy it. But those are definitely worth taking part in because you can still view the photos and the videos even if you don't buy them. And there are three places where you can buy them. I think there's one where the green screen is in the set area, there's one just before the Backlot Cafe and then there's one at the Hogwarts model towards the end of the tour. So the next tip I have for you is definitely ask the staff for any advice or any tips because there were passports that you could, you know, use and stamp throughout the tour. I didn't know anything about that. I only knew about it when I saw someone stamping something and I was so disappointed that we missed out on that. So definitely check with them if there's any special stuff happening. Like as I said, we had the Death Eaters coming out every so often and dancing around and I mean, that makes them sound really fun <laughs> they were obviously menacing but they were dancing around and like waving their wands which was really cool you could take photos with them I didn't know that that was going to be happening so I think it's really great if you check with the staff before you go in and find out about that lastly I would say definitely allocate time to enjoy the shop it's a huge shop and it's got so many amazing things in it and it's beautifully laid out however as you can imagine there's obviously always going to be a huge queue to pay allocate time there because we only had literally five minutes to look around the shop and I was desperately looking for a Hedwig toy I really wanted like a nice big plush Hedwig and they only had the puppet versions and I didn't want that so I literally walked around and I was like okay they don't have that they don't have the top I want they don't have the pin badge I want so I'll order it online but you definitely need to have time to really look through it and see the new stuff and also find any of the old familiar stuff that you might be really keen to get as part of your collection so those are all of the tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you for the tour now I really want to share with you my favorite part which definitely starts with the Great Hall. Oh my gosh, that set is incredible. I really liked the sets where you walked in and you completely immersed yourself in the world of Harry Potter. Some of them obviously, you know, they have the sets but they're behind railings so you can't access them or be a part of them. But the Great Hall is like the first one that you enter and like the beautiful doors to enter in. And they were getting ready for Halloween so they had loads of pumpkins and like party food and stuff on the table which looked amazing. And it was just a really beautiful space. You don't get very long in the Great Hall initially because obviously that's the first place they kind of guide you into as a tour group. So they do kind of say, okay, you've had 10 minutes, like please move on so we can bring the next group in. So you can go back to it, although we didn't have a chance to. Definitely that was one of my favorite moments. I just thought it was like really majestic actually because it's like the official place where they filmed. It's just so cool to be a part of that. So I loved the Great Hall. I did actually enjoy all of the sets a lot more than I thought I would. Even though, as I say, a lot of them are behind metal barriers, you still get a real sense of it. And like the Gryffindor common room, the beds were really small and really skinny, but I guess they weren't really sleeping in them. So they didn't really need to have like proper beds, right? So, and obviously there were kids when they started filming. So <laughs> it just really surprised me how tiny that was. So yeah, and I loved the Slytherin common room. It was really nice. In a way, it was a bit bigger and nicer to look at than the Gryffindor common room kind of felt a bit squashed in the corner so I actually really liked the, the Slytherin room a lot more than I thought I would. Don't tell anyone I said that because obviously Ravenclaw, I got to stay loyal to Ravenclaw. I absolutely loved Gringotts. I was really surprised by that because you kind of are just walking through a few props and things like that and then you come around the corner and it's literally around the corner and you're met by these amazing fake marble columns and these beautiful fake chandeliers and again it's like you're literally immersing yourself in this set you're walking through it and it was incredible honestly I, I walked around the corner and I was like wow that is actually what happened when I walked in there and you'll see it when I share my micro vlog it's not really a vlog but you'll see it in a minute when I share that I, I thought that was amazing that really took my breath away and then the other set I really enjoyed is the brand new greenhouse that they have Professor Sprout's greenhouse it's a beautiful building firstly they've done an amazing job there and also it's just so much fun to be able to play with the mandrakes and pull them in and out. The only thing is you do feel a little bit rushed in there because obviously there's a queue of people waiting to have a go and you know pull out the mandrakes themselves and take photos with them so you don't really get time to like be in that space as much as you might want to unless I guess you went around and queued again. We didn't have time to do that. It was a really cool set. I really liked that. I liked the ones where you could walk through it. It just kind of felt like you were really part of it there. I liked Diagon Alley but I wish it had been bigger. It felt like a really tiny set so it was really quick and easy to walk through and 
obviously with all the railings and everything there it's not as if you can go into the shops and stuff like you can in Universal Studios so I wish there had been more of that that would have been fun if there'd been a bit more to go into there but honestly I think those three were my absolute favorites I really loved those okay so I'm now going to show you my micro vlog <laughs> it's not really a vlog because I'm not really talking I just did time lapse videos as I say I slowed them down as much as I could for you guys as much as my editing software would let me slow them down unfortunately so it is really short but I hope that you get a good idea of what you can expect when you go and visit the tour yourself so enjoy watching let me know what you think in the comments below what house you belong to i love reaching out and connecting with other harry potter fans so it's always good to hear from you guys and i will see you in next week's video and don't forget to subscribe so that you stay tuned for part two of this video where i'm going to be doing an unboxing and haul with you and i will see you in next week's video Ba -da 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 -da. Ooh. bazinga